Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to show you how to get the most out of your plastic using injection molds and also using open pour molds. Stick around and we'll show you how. So for today's color we're going to use a color called cutthroat trout and what it means by changeable is it kind of changes color depending on the way the light's hitting it. We're not really going to count drops we're just going to add a little at first and then adjust as we need. We're gonna make a single color because it's easier for remelt purposes as far as remelting everything back down and getting the exact same bait. What I mean by that, I'll show you. When you shoot a laminate, your sprue, which is what's left in the mold, you're gonna have both colors together. You can remelt this back down, but it's gonna blend those two colors and you're not gonna get the exact same color that you started with. Sorry if there's a lot of background noise. It started raining again just a minute ago, but we're still gonna get this video made for you. And add a little bit more. Yeah, I think we're good right there. And then we're just gonna add two sizes of black flake. We're gonna add the 0 0.015 and 0 0.040. We're gonna start with about a 16th teaspoon of each one, and then see if that's enough. Let me get my little scoop. All right, so there's our 16th of the 0 0.015. Here's our 16th of 0 0.040. Let's see what that looks like. I think we're good right there. We're going to throw this back in the microwave just a little bit, get it back up to temperature, and then we're going to start injecting. All right, the plastic's ready to go. We're going to see how many times we can inject this mold first, and then we'll cut up all the scraps at the end and remelt it. Here's round one. All right, so we were able to get two full runs of the injection uh, finesse worms. Uh, you can see in the bottom of the cup, there is almost nothing left in the bottom. You wouldn't be able to inject anything else with that. But what we're gonna do, you always have the plugs, which are what come out of the end of the injector after you inject. And what you can do is just take these. I like to cut them up into small pieces. Just. It just helps it remelt back down easier. If you have a big, like if I were to just throw this chunk in there and try to remelt this, before this piece got melted all the way back down to a liquid, some of the smaller pieces could actually start to burn. So we're just gonna cut all these up real quick. And you don't have to be like super particular about it. Just try to cut it up into some smaller pieces. And then you can also take the sprue where you inject these, you can pull it off and you cut this up as well. This is why in this video we're doing a single solid color because no matter how many times we cut this stuff up and remelt it, it's gonna be the exact same color. Whereas like I was showing you earlier with that laminated sprue, those two colors are gonna blend. Doing it this way, we're gonna get the exact same color every time. We're gonna get all this remelted. We'll do some hand pouring and we'll see how many we end up with. All right, we got all those leftovers remelted back down. And all you gotta do for these hand pour molds is just pour it straight from the cup into the mold. This is a old finesse worm mold that I made uh, probably three years ago. Um, having open pour molds like this on hand are really nice for just using up your last little bit of plastic like what we're doing right here. And it's a little easier to do this when you're not pouring around the camera. So it is a lot easier than what it's gonna look like right here. But I'll show you a couple of these real quick and then we're just gonna keep pouring, use up the rest of this plastic and see how many we end up with. All 
All right, for anyone wondering, for these open pour, this is a silicone mold. You can see it's real flexible. All you have to do when you're done with these, I just pull up on the edge of it to get the top of that worm, and then you just pull them right out. All right, so the final tally, we were able to hand pour 10 more of these finesse worms. As you can see here, we used almost every ounce of that plastic that we had. And for what's left in this cup, once it dries, you can literally just pull it out, save that. And what I do is I'll keep all similar colors in little Tupperware containers. And then once you get, say you do this five or six times, you can take all these pieces, throw them all in together, remelt it, pour some more. You can remelt the plastic several times before it ever starts to degrade. And what it'll do is it'll actually start to darken up the colors after so many reheats and then depending on the flake that you're using the flake will actually curl up instead of holding its original shape still usable plastic but one thing you can do is i think in one of my other videos i've showed it you can add a little bit of heat stabilizer to your plastic as you're remelting but yeah you can see here we ended up with 10 more i'll show you a size comparison that may not sound like a lot but this is the netbait t-mac which is very comparable size wise to like a zoom trick worm and as you can see they're pretty similar in length but the diameter of both of these baits are a lot larger than these they probably use close to double the amount of plastic that a regular trick worm would use yeah both of these molds make a fantastic worm i'll pick a couple of each up just to show you the difference um the big difference in these two, other than the open pour mold that I made is slightly longer, this injection worm is going to be round all the way around the bait. And then the open pour, you can see it's flat on the bottom. And the flat side is just because of where you open or where you pour the mold, where it dries, it's going to be flat on, which looks like the top of the mold, but it's actually going to be the bottom of the bait. They do make injection molds. Um, where you can inject this worm with a flat bottom. But both of these fantastic baits. I'm going to throw these on a shaky head probably 90% of the time. Uh, you can wacky rig these baits. They do have a ton of action as a wacky rig, but I throw them on a shaky head almost all the time. Try to get a close-up of this color right here. Let me grab a couple of these. So it's a nice, like, kind of a darker watermelon color, and then depending on how the light shines on it, it has like a brownish gold highlight effect to it. Really cool color. They look way better in person. The camera just doesn't quite do it justice. But yeah, this is a really good way to maximize all your plastic. And if you really wanted to, you could drop down to even smaller. This is like a four and a half inch uh, drop shot worm. It's very similar to a robo worm. This is a tiny little three inch worm. If I wanted to hand pour these with a cup of plastic, I could probably get a hundred of each, if not more. <laughs> these molds are Moose Ridge molds, um, really good molds. They're made out of like a composite material. I don't really know what it is, um, but they operate on Facebook. Go check them out. They make a ton of different molds made out of this material. And they're a fraction of the price of what you would find an aluminum mold for. They make really good baits. If you want to see me make some out of these composite molds, let me know. And uh, we can definitely pour some up. This little mold's really cool. I actually throw this. When I originally bought it, I was going to use it on a Ned Rig. But after getting it, it's very, very small. And I actually like throwing it on a drop shot a lot. Yeah, let us know what you guys would like to see next. Don't forget to go check out our Instagram page. I'll throw it up right here. We post a lot more uh, on our Instagram page than videos. So you'll see a lot of other content that we make, a lot of the baits that we make. Um, you'll see little teasers to the YouTube videos on Instagram prior to being posted. So go check us out. We'd really appreciate the support. That's actually where we operate the business side of things. So if you want to buy anything that you see or want to collaborate with us and make some custom lures or whatever you'd like, hit us up on there. Shoot us a message. Let us know what you'd like. But yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.